Good afternoon, everyone. Andy Jacob here with the Dot Com Magazine Interview Spotlight Show. And for today's show, we have a very esteemed guest. I'm very, very excited and delighted to speak to Mr. Jason Lee, the CEO and founder of Daily Pay. And if you don't know about Daily Pay, which is highly unlikely, we're going to learn about it today. They have an unbelievable on-demand platform for employers and employees that is just something to behold. And Jason's background and experience is very, very unique and very extensive. Uh, Jason has an incredible background in banking and uh, is, an, is a very important cog in the entire uh, uh, fintech space. So, Jason, thank you so much for coming on the show to talk about daily pay today. Thanks, Andy. Super thrilled to be here. Super excited. Huge. Thank fan. you, thank you, Jason. So, can you just let's pull the lens back to start the interview and let's talk about daily pay at a high level and let's just talk about uh, what daily pay does and how it helps uh, employers and employees in the on-demand platform. You bet. Uh, well, the simplest way to think about uh, daily pay uh, is actually to think about uh, the problem that we're solving. Uh, so uh, many people uh, who are listening to your show uh, are probably have had at one point in their life an experience where they couldn't pay a bill on time uh, or maybe, uh, you know, here they were working hard all week and uh, they had rent to and they couldn't make rent. Uh, well, uh, you know, a lot of times it's the case that my goodness, here I am, I'm still working. Uh, payday may not be until next Friday, but gosh, I've got this bill due right now. Um, and in you know, kind of the old days, what used to happen is, well, there weren't a lot of ways to deal with that. You uh, could either uh, try to borrow money, maybe from a friend or maybe from a relative. Maybe you'd you know, overdraft your bank account, you know, God forbid. Uh, I'll tell you, in college, what I used to do was I used to write a bad check. You, know, you, you, know, you write the check and you don't sign it, and then you give it to the landlord. And I know we've all been there or you, uh, you, know, you write the wrong amount so they don't cash it. And then by the time uh, you, know, you write the right amount, then you've been paid. So there's all these kind of things that uh, we all do and that people today, it's sort of not a laughing matter. People uh, today, how they try to get around the system. And you know, I think the big observation that I had at least was, gosh, there's a lot of problems that are caused through the asynchronicity of when we work and when we get paid. You know, here I am, I'm working day after day after day and arbitrarily I'm being paid, you know, in a week or in two weeks, but goodness, I've got needs today. Um, and that asynchronicity or that mismatch in timing, there's really no good reason for it. Um, or maybe I should say that the reason for it is one that, you know, can really be solved uh, through financial technology. Uh, and so we offer a platform to employers uh, where without changing their current payroll process, we're like a little bit of like a sheath or a cover that goes right on top of their current payroll system. And it enables their employees to essentially get real-time pay, you know, access their pay whenever they want. Now, all of a sudden, that person who has rent due tomorrow, but it's not being paid until next Friday, well, now she doesn't have to write a bad check or hide from the landlord or, you know, God forbid, pay a $50 late fee. She can actually just say, you know what? I can pay my rent literally today, pay it on time, feel empowered in doing so, have a good relationship, a better relationship with her landlord and not pay any of these additional fees that she might otherwise do simply because she was suffering the effect of the asynchronicity between when she's working and when she's getting paid. You know, all of us today, Andy, we're, we're used to having real-time access to everything. Now, you've got real-time access to a car that will pull right up to your home. You've got real-time access to uh, food to be delivered to your home during this pandemic. You know, a little closer to home, uh, you know, people are swapping uh, money for pizza, money for, you know, a drink or, a, you know, a, a, maybe a task through Venmo or any of the other peer-to-peer -peer apps. Things move instantly and on demand right now, except your pay. And so that's the problem that we're really setting out to fix. See, that's a brilliant idea, Jason. So if we pull the lens back just a little bit, 
So this is a platform that sits on top of an existing sort of payroll platform for an employer. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. So this is really unique. So I would imagine that there's just thousands, probably millions of people that get paid either every week or every two weeks or bi-monthly. And like you said, they're, they're not, they don't have synchronicity with their payments and when they're getting the money on that, let's say next Friday. So what your system does, it allows these people to get money ahead of their paycheck. Is that sort of the simple idea behind it? Well, I think that it's one way of looking at it. I think we look at it as it already is your money. You know, we're redefining all of these terms. You know, one used to say that payday was the day that I received the funds. But that's actually not right. Payday is actually today the day that you get the money that you've already made. That is your money. And you know how we know that to be the case? Let's say that you worked at a store and it's a Tuesday afternoon and you've worked Monday and Tuesday um, and God forbid you get fired. You know, you, you get terminated that day and payday is not until next Friday. Well, the, actually what the laws say is that you are owed that money for Monday and Tuesday that day. And uh, you don't just forego those funds because you didn't make it to payday. No, no, you worked Monday and Tuesday and the states say, you know what, that is your money. So you should get that money the minute you walk out of the store if you've been terminated. Now, why is that the law? If you think about it sensibly, it's the law because guess what? It is your money. And so you should take it with you when you leave. It's not just because I didn't get to payday, I didn't make it. And so the notion of a paycheck or a payday, we're turning that all on its head in the sense that as I earn money and as I work, well, that's all, that's all that pay is accruing. You know, I, a little bit of a nerdier example, let's say for those of us who love accounting, you know, let's say that you are an accountant and you know, you're closing out the books and it, it was, you're closing out the books on uh, September 30th and September 30th happened to be a Wednesday, but payday is not until next Friday. Well, the accounting rules actually say I have to book a payable, a liability, because that's not my money. I already know as a corporation that I'm going to be sending that money out. So we have all of these signals, all of these artifacts, pieces of evidence that tell us actually that is the employee's money. And so what our technology is simply doing is it's making that a reality. See, I love this idea, and, I, and I've spoken to many people in the fintech space and a lot of entrepreneurs and CEOs and, and founders, and this idea just resonates with me because what you're saying is exactly true. People work. They wait till, let's say, the following Friday to get the money that they've already worked for, but in reality, you're making them, giving them the opportunity to get the money today for what they've already worked for. It's really brilliant. And I would think that as an employer, you would love to give this opportunity to your employees because I think it would make you as an employer look like you're even a better employer than what you already are. Is that sort of the way it works? Yeah. And look, that's why the best employers, uh, both large, medium, and small, are adopting our platform um, just just in scale um, to be able to offer this benefit to their employees. You know, we work with some great companies, n names that you've heard of, companies like a Kroger, the second largest employer in the country, uh, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, and he knows a thing or two about kind of smart decisions. Uh, Adeco Staffing, which is a huge staffing company out there. Um, you know, Six Flags, the amusement park, McDonald's corporate. Uh, you walk into a Boston marketer, uh, you know, the, uh, the guy behind the counter will tell you, yeah, we love daily pay. So we work with a ton of names that you've heard of. A lot of companies you haven't heard of. Um, a lot of great, you know, American companies out there that are a 3,000 person nursing home uh, out there who also uses our benefit. Here's the thing. You know, we're not, you know, we're, we don't claim to be super smart people. We just sort of use common sense. You treat your employees better. You meet their needs. Guess what? They're going to stay longer. It's not that hard. 
See, I love that. And I'm sorry, pardon me, uh, Jason. I love that because you're empowering employees, but at the same time, you're also empowering employers to be able to give something back to their employees that they haven't had before daily pay has come along. So I love the idea. Now, if I'm an employer watching this and I want you know, to offer this to my employees, how does it work? Like, how do they get the money? Does, how does the employee get the money? Who pays for the money? Uh, does it come out of the employer's account? I mean, these are questions that all employers watching this are going to want answered. And I know you have a big team and a big tech, you know, technology group that answers those questions. But at a high level, how does it work? Here's what I would say. If you're listening to this and you're an employer, there is a difference between daily payroll and daily pay. Big difference. So let me take the first. Employers can do this on their own. They don't need us. Don't call us. You can do this on your own. You could literally run payroll every day. Now, most employers don't want to do that. Um, It's actually very difficult to do. That's frankly why companies run payroll once every two weeks. You know, they have to. Uh, you know, but if they, you know, but uh, if there weren't laws that said they had to, it's a pretty difficult process. I might want to do it once a month, or frankly, once a year. I mean, it's a very difficult process. And you know, God bless you, Andy, if you've never run payroll. But you know, this is how I spend a lot of my time in this world. Uh, you know, payroll practitioners—they really are essential workers. They are the heroes uh, in these corporations because they do a very difficult job. And frankly, it's one that they shouldn't have to do every single day. It's hard, it's error, a lot of errors can happen. It's very complicated, it's legally intensive, there are compliance issues. So let me start by saying that's daily payroll. Has the same effect, but very difficult to do. Technology is designed to give someone the end result without doing any of the work. That's what technology does. That's the purpose of technology. All technology is driven towards accomplishing some end goal, but having it such that it can be done through the tap of a button without actually having to do any of the process yourself. That's one of the big uh, drivers around technology. And that's a little bit of how we think about our company, Daily Pay. We We say this every day, which is, We want to enable people to run, I'm sorry, to offer daily pay without running payroll daily. Now, to answer your question more directly, we take care of all of it. We fund the payments. We figure out how much someone's worked. We calculate that. We deal with deductions, garnishments. Um, uh, We settle on the payday, we're, we're doing all, we work with the employee, it's our app. Literally, the employer just runs payroll as they always have for the last hundreds of years, once every two weeks. It's like we don't even exist. And that's the goal of technology. It's how do you create an end result that's profoundly different for the end user without creating additional burden for the employer? And that's really kind of how our technology is designed. That is, that's a great way to explain it. And I haven't heard technology explained that way, Jason. It makes a lot of sense. For people watching the show, we do get younger entrepreneurs that watch our series and watch the show. And they'll, they'll look you up, Jason. Obviously, they'll, they'll see your background and experience and and, and what you've been able to accomplish, not only with daily pay, but prior with your experience in the, in the financial sector. What would you tell younger entrepreneurs about, um, about entrepreneurship? What would you tell the younger entrepreneurs from someone who obviously has been able to build a wonderful company in daily pay, who are starting out like you did many years ago in, in starting their own company? What kind of advice could you share with these with these younger entrepreneurs that one day hope to be able to build something as powerful as daily pay has been able to do? Uh, well, look, I think my first piece of advice is don't follow people's advice. Uh, okay. You know, like, you know, what the heck do I know? You know, it worked for us, uh, but 
you know, I, I think if I were to maybe give some general principles, the first is there are two marks and two, um, I think, prerequisites for success in starting a new business. And, and I kind of firmly believe you have to have both of these. The first is you need a big market. You know, in entrepreneur speak, we call this the TAM or total addressable market size. There have to be a lot of people who need your product. And that is like lesson number one, please. If you want to build a big business and solve a big problem, make sure it's a big business and a big problem. And so you hear about different stories in the media and in the press about all these successful businesses. If you look at all of them, the common thread is there's tackling big, big problems. Now, not every entrepreneur has to do that, right? You could have some niche business or some specialty business, and that's kind of, um, you know, and, that, and that's totally appropriate. But if you want to build a highly disruptive business and take on big industry, you, you have to make sure that you're going after a big problem. That's sort of point number one. The second is product market fit, meaning go after a big problem. And number two, test product market fit. I can't tell you how many times I get pitches or I get asked for advice from entrepreneurs. My first question is, well, how do you know people even want to buy the product? And, you know, generally speaking, you see inchoate versions of the demand in the market. Meaning you see people trying to do offline versions or hacky versions of the problem you're trying to solve and the technology merely operationalizes or solves that issue. But you have to see that in the market first. Like as an example, when we started our business here at Daily Pay, we researched something called the overdraft market. And what is overdraft? Overdraft is something where it is most commonly used when someone is not looking for a loan it's actually, they've got some money coming in later in a couple of days, but they have an immediate need today. And so they write a bad check or they overdraft the account and they pay $35 for that. So it's Thursday. My rent is due today, but payday is tomorrow. I got to write a bad check and the bank covers me for it. It's one day. You know, I know I'll have the money tomorrow, but it's one day. Last year, Americans paid $38 billion in overdraft fees. If you're someone who pays overdraft, that's $1,400 a person. Now, that market exists almost exclusively to address the following problem. I know money's coming, but I don't have it right now. Does that sound familiar to you? It sounds like the problem we're, we're solving. So we saw that and we see a highly inferior way to solve a problem that we can use technology to solve much simpler. So we saw that inchoate version of how people were addressing that issue. We knew there was a problem because 30, there were 38 billion reasons for us to see there was a problem. And so that's a, a perfect situation where technology can come in and address something. So my two, I think, pieces of advice are number one, if you want to go big, make sure it's a big problem. And number two, identify the product market fit before you start. If this is a real problem, you'll see it. You'll see, you'll see some attempt at solving the issue in the market that's completely like non-operationalized, but that your technology can operationalize. That is great, great advice. And we talk to many entrepreneurs that ask the question, do you stay with a model before you either pivot or move it or change it or, or, or scrap it completely? And maybe, and I don't know what type of pivot daily pay has or hasn't done. Maybe you haven't done one, but just for the entrepreneurs watching, could you make them uh, feel we don't want to make them feel. Could you give them some sage advice about pivoting and if that ever makes sense in a business and maybe some personal experience that not only maybe you've had, but a company that you've invested 
uh, in that perhaps pivoted in a way that made a lot of sense and actually ended up being a great success? Yeah, so look, I, I think what I would say is I'm, I'm fairly consistent. You pivot when you've identified you don't have product market fit. So let me turn that question around. Here's a fact pattern. If you are in one of these situations right now, you don't have product market fit. One, you're considering discounting. You're considering giving your product away for free. You've convinced yourself, well, I just need to get people started and then I'll change the price. Let me bore in on this one. We've never done that here at Daily Pay. And the reason why we haven't is because the product is a product that requires a price. What product isn't? So why on earth would you want to figure out if you have a product that works if it's not the real product? Why on earth would you want to give something away for free or severely discount if the product you're really trying to assess is one that has the price? It's completely nonsensical. And if you are considering doing that right now, you need to pivot. The second thing I would tell you is there's no shame in pivoting. It's your life, it's your business, and it's your product. Ultimately, you have to carry the responsibility. Who cares if you pivot, if you create the best product for your customers? It does not matter. And I, you know, I, I counsel folks a lot on this. There is no one way to get to success. We as a company never pivoted from our core product, but we did pivot from different customer bases. And we did that when we started to determine that certain customers just weren't, um, or we did not see a sustainable path forward. Those are tough decisions. You know, I've got a board of directors and uh, you know, I've got outside investors, I'm venture capital backed. And when I proposed to make this big pivot, it was highly controversial. We had made a lot of revenue. But when I looked at this thing out one year, three years, five years, I didn't want to be in this customer base. I really saw it over here. And it's a tough thing to do, but ultimately you as the entrepreneur and you as the founder own that responsibility. I'm not saying to be flippant but you have to see and be very objective and highly clinical with reading the market on whether or not it's time to pivot. As part of that, don't be emotional. Learn to distance yourself from the company. You're much more than your company and you're much more than your product. Okay, you're a real person. And uh, you have to create some distance to be able to be that objective and clinical, to be able to say, I'm gonna give up, and in our case, it was 98% of our revenue in this one customer base. And I said, we're going after the 2%. So you have to be able to make that call. If you're not ready to make that call, don't be an entrepreneur. That is powerful. And Jason, you're known as somewhat of a, a, a zeitgeist, someone that can foresee into the future and sort of feel in a vibe with all your background and experience about what's going to happen in the future. And obviously we're not in the prediction game, but with more people working at home and working out of the office, how does that play into what daily pay is doing with more of the employees now working out of their homes? Do you see that as a benefit um, uh, uh, in our society and how does daily pay fit into that? Well, look, in general, what I would say is the workplace has changed. Um, the level of, of engagement that employers need to create with their employees has just gone up. And I don't care if you're a salaried worker, you're uh, you know, stocking shelves at Kroger, you're, uh, you know, you're hosting a podcast or a, a TV show. You know, the, the level of engagement has changed dramatically, and that requirement um, has continued to go up. At the end of the day, we are in the business of deepening the bond between the employer and the employee. And that is a compact that has gone through a lot of rough times uh, you know, over the last several years. And I think what the pandemic has taught us, if you, if you look at the top performing companies right now, and I'm not just talking about corporations, I'm talking about um, you know, retailers, uh, you know, the best grocery stores, um, the best um, electronic stores, the best 
big box stores, it's those companies that made serious investments in their people. And so as I look out into the future, absolutely. The, the compact between employer and employee just got that more important. And whether it's daily pay, whether it's some other type of technology, whether you're creating a better employee experience, whatever it might be, yes, that is an absolute requisite of how the workforce is now changing. That's, that's really great. And daily pay definitely, I can see, enhances that bond between the employer and the employee. So if you take daily pay out of uh, two or three years from now, uh, and you sort of think about the way the business looks out into the future, does someone like you, with your background experience, do you, do you stay in your lane and say to yourself, I'm just going to keep pounding this lane to make it th as massive as I possibly can? Or do you allow yourself the opportunity to start thinking about other things that daily pay can get into? You know, talking sort of to entrepreneurs that are running their own business, what advice do you give on that? Specialization and doing one thing well is underrated these days. Do one thing well, okay? Do, you know, this, this, this uh, generation of, you know, flipping and right swiping and left swiping and scrolling, I think it's gotten people thinking you could do several things at the same, no. In business, do one thing really well, be excellent. We talk a lot here at Daily Pay about how we're the gold standard. Be the gold standard. Don't do a lot of things kinda well. Be the gold standard, do what you do really well. Be the market leader, be the 800 pound gorilla, be the elephant in the room, be the best. I mean, being the best is like, we've lost that. We've lost a lot of that um, uh, desire to be the best. And you look at the storied companies, they are the best at what they do. Apple is the best at consumer electronics. Amazon is the best at e-com. You, know, uh, you know, say what you will, Facebook is the best at knowing how to do social communication. Like the, 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 the world, I think a lot of folks, because technology and setting up companies through the cloud and through um, all of the innovation and backend infrastructure, it's so easy to start up companies and it's so easy to get distracted and to have your perspective refracted through the prism. But refracted light does not create a hole. You know what creates the hole? The laser. The laser creates the hole. Then, after you've done that, and to be clear, when I say create the laser, I'm not saying do one functional thing right. That laser that you're doing is being focused on your customers. And when you have a laser focus on your customers, that is what enables you to do the other stuff. So we have a lot of products that are both in market as well as in development. But it's not because we said we should offer a lot of products. It's because we were laser focused on the customer and through that customer experience and through that customer dialogue, we figured out, okay, a laser-like focus on the customer enabled us to say, here are the seven other things that we now want to offer our customer. That, that's amazing. And, and specialists win and generalists lose. And ending, ending this chat with you about talking about customers is really the key because what we're hearing from you and other very successful entrepreneurs is that it starts and ends with the customer. And so many people get lost in the fog these days that they're not focused laser-like like daily pay is about the customers and the customer experience and what they need that they, they just lose themselves and lose their company because they're not focusing on the mo most important asset, which is their customer. And I'm so glad to hear you say that, Jason. I wanted to thank you. I know that time is very tight for you and I know you could barely even squeeze in a half hour for me with your busy day, but Man, we packed it in for a half hour, Jason. Just some of the knowledge that you've given to entrepreneurs and, and, and telling us about daily pay and how employers can successfully integrate daily pay 
into their already existing system to make their bomb with their employees that much better is really remarkable. And I just wanted to thank you so much for carving out a little time today, Jason, to be on the show. This is really a remarkable interview and you're a remarkable person. Well, Andy, let me also just extend my gratitude. You know, um, entrepreneurship is an extremely important thing in this country. And whether you're starting out a small business or you're trying to take on and change the future of payroll and banking, do it. You got to do it. This is the time. The, the cost of entry is very low right now, but do it in the right way. Be sensible and set your objectives very, very clearly. Be highly clinical about self-evaluation. Figure out big markets you want to attack. Identify product market fit. And after you start a company that employs 10,000 people, call us so we can pay them daily. Love it. You're the best. Thank you so much again. And, and it was wonderful talking to you for the, for the series today. You bet. All the best, Thank Andy. You, Thank you. Thank you so much. 